Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dorn. and if you want to become an expert on human behavior, a master of personality psychology, there are going to be a few things that you will want to get rid of. Some general tendencies that we all do, no matter if we know or have read about personality psychology or not. I'm talking about general fallacies we make when trying to understand other people's behavior. And to understand these fallacies, there are particularly two fallacies I want to talk about in today's video. First, our general tendency to focus on a person's downsides rather than their upsides. Second, our general tendency of wanting to focus on what's on the outside rather than on what's on the inside. So we have inside-out mistypings and we have upside-down mistypings. We misread and misunderstand other people's personality and who they are based on these two general trends in personality psychology. So we do this even if we don't know of the MTI, even if we have never read about personality psychology or personality types, we do these fallacies constantly. We are constantly interpreting other people's behavior and trying to understand other people. Everyone is always trying to understand human behavior. Everyone is always analyzing social interactions, people, friends, family members. We're trying to figure each other out, but we have no idea how. So we tend to focus on the wrong things. Often we focus on the wrong things. And these two things are appealing to focus on. It's appealing to focus on a person's downsides rather than their upsides because in doing so we are inflating our own positive qualities by focusing on another person's negative qualities, their mistakes, their flaws, their issues in life rather than their positives. We are creating this idea and reinforcing this idea within ourselves that we are good people, great people. We are good at what we do. We have positive qualities that other people do not. So our general tendency is we tend to focus on the positives when we study ourselves and the negatives when we study other people. This is uh, similar to how on IQ tests and when it comes to intelligence, everyone tends to overestimate their own intelligence and underestimate the intelligence of other people. We overestimate and inflate our own positive qualities and we downscale and talk down on and miss the positive qualities of other people. So... Naturally, when we are trying to explain another person's personality to them, we're going to make them feel misunderstood. If what we are telling another person is going to be more negative than positive, we're also going to give the impression that our view of the other person is more negative than positive. Of course, naturally, this is what's going to happen. The other person is going to feel misunderstood. You are going to feel misunderstood when other people are explaining you because other people will assume that your negatives, your weaknesses, your flaws are intentional when in reality they're not. Often, most of the time, they are mistakes, they are incompetence, a general failure, misunderstanding or Uh, just forgetfulness, sheer forgetfulness. When we're so focused on exploring the positive qualities of ourselves and to doing the things we like and enjoy and value, we miss potential negative consequences we can have on other value scales. We miss and forget other bad things and problems because we are so focused on correcting the problems we see and on making things better that we think or good. So I mentioned there's another problem beyond focusing on a person's general downsides. Yeah, we focus on our general upsides. We cannot accurately assess our own flaws and issues. We are often unaware of our mistakes and problems. And if we become made aware of these things, we often intentionally self-correct them. We stop doing bad things when we are confronted with bad things about our own personality. When we realize that we are doing something wrong, we tend to start doing things right. So these things are self-correcting. Skill is not personality type. A person's skills and abilities and learned talents are not the same as their personality type. 
they have in fact little to do with it. Often most general skills that we have such as being good at communication or being good at logical thinking, these are things we have learned because perhaps we have an academic background or perhaps we have supportive friendly parents and social networks that reward us and support us in developing these talents. Often our general flaws and mistakes and misunderstandings come from lack of support or lack of social networks or lack of an environment that will help us nurture and build these talents in a positive direction. Equally, personality type tends to have little to do with our general behavior and a problem is our behavior and our intentions behind our behavior tend to mismatch. Often we do things that go directly contrary to our personal, individual intentions, values and interests. We do things because we assume we have to because of our general developed attitudes about what one should and should not do. And we end up doing things in ways that can run directly contrary or contradict our own beliefs and values and interests. And often we we're critically unaware of our own interests and values because we have not even been given room to explore them. We have not even been given room to explore our personal freedom or need for freedom because we have been grown up and developed in an environment that was very constrictive and limiting. Often these things are developed late in life. A lot of our innate passions and values are developed later in life. So we start often with one or two key qualities that we find are core to ourselves and then we have other qualities that we have forgotten. We have a forgotten, a lost twin, you could say, a lost twin, a person that we lose almost immediately in our earliest childhood, our earliest years, so early we actually forgot it even happened. Intentionally we remove these qualities or push them away and we judge them as dirty or rude or evil. We have a developed idea of good and evil in us. Everyone has a developed state of good and evil in their mind. That means there are things you believe to be good about yourself and things that you believe are evil. And you don't even dare to speak about evil. Our general quality as human beings is we don't dare to speak about our potential evil side or our potential dark side. We don't even talk about our need for freedom or we don't even talk about our need for harmony or for communication or for interpersonal connection because... We have come to judge this as an evil, a problem, something bad about ourselves. So when correctly trying to understand another person, we have to constantly interview them. We, have, we cannot just rely on what they do. Often they will be intentionally trying to cover up and hide parts of themselves. Everyone is hiding something and everyone is trying to draw attention to something. In social interactions we put on personas and masks. In a social interaction I will appear more extroverted even though by doing so I am draining myself. And so I will seek to withdraw from other people frequently so that I can engage in and explore and let loose my personal qualities. In different situations we will put on different characteristics and if we poke focus on, and this is such an appealing thing, you know, it's so appealing to focus on a person's objective behavior because it appears so objective. Yeah, you say you like this or that, but this is what you're actually doing. So this must be your actual personality. You say you value honesty, but you're constantly covering things up and hiding things and manipulating the truth. So you must be a manipulative person, you know. We read in these things about other people. We uh, make these general assumptions uh, that their behavior is more accurate than their values or intentions because we don't genuinely know and cannot truly see a person's intentions and values. Often what we need to do is we need to sit down with a person one-on-one -on -one and 
talk with them about what they actually want you know what do you actually want what do you enjoy doing you know what uh, why do you do those things and what does you what makes you say that and about yourself and where does this come from and since how for how long have you thought this way about yourself and where did this begin you know you have to actually sit down and interview a person and get past their general developed attitudes scale away all the attitudes get rid of all those ingrained beliefs about good and bad and just have a natural non-judgmental interaction truly getting to know another person truly listening to them and hearing them out you know what do you like what do you enjoy who are you at your best you know what tends to stress you out why do you tend to get upset in those situations why do these things tend to happen around you like when when we're trying to figure out other people, we're often trying to read minds and we're actually in inclined to want to make up our minds about other people as quickly as possible. And we tend to believe our read is more accurate the more quickly we can make it. So we're inclined to want to stereotype on other people and make first assumptions and to stick to our first assumptions about other people. If a person comes off as bad, it's often because they were in a bad state of mind the time we met them. But this can have washed away the next day. And often we don't even notice because we are so focused on that bad first second, that bad first assumption we made of them. So, on the path to becoming an expert at human behavior, what you want to learn is you want to focus on a person's upsides. You want to understand first, before anything else, a person's intended positive values and interests, their intentions, their values, their interests, their positive values and their positive interests. That's the first most important thing to do when studying any person, be it a supervillain, a thief, a murderer, or <laughs> an annoying stepmother, you want to understand what it is that they want that is positive and good. That's the first thing you want to know when understanding another person. And that's going to be the most accurate thing you will know about that person. And that's going to be the most meaningful and significant thing you can learn about that other person. It's going to help you understand all the bad choices that they have made that have led up to this point. It's going to help you understand all those issues that you've had with this person. All those conflicts you've had. All those struggles you've had. Because it's going to help you capture the human side of this person. Now, when studying human behavior, there is an important truth. 90% of all behavior is universally shared. That means you do it not because you are a very particular or special personnel type, but you do it because you are very, very much human. There are some things about you and your personality that are going to be very, very much human. And that means if you meet an alien and you start talking about your different qualities and how you think and what you feel and what you value, the alien is going to be like, what's that? I don't understand. I've never heard of this before. And you're going to say, oh, that's human. That's All humans are like that. So... In becoming an expert of human behavior, it's also understanding what is human behavior and what is the behavior of a particular personality type or a particular subtype within or sub variation within a personality type. When understanding another person, you're going to be first writing down what their values and intentions are and your only way to figuring those things out is ask and interview other people frequently ask them questions and this is how you become good friends with basically anybody you ask them genuine questions about who they are and you take an interest in their life and you make them aware of their own interests and values and you make them feel good about themselves and that's just how you become best friends with basically anybody. That's how every social interaction in which you do this is going to be positive. Almost every interaction you're going to have with another person is going to be, wow, he's such a good guy. Oh, he seems so interesting and so nice and so uh, understanding, and so friendly, you know. 
So becoming an expert on human behavior is really just becoming a good friend, a good family member, a good partner in a relationship, a good co-worker. That's the goal, that's why we're all learning this, that's the point. Thanks everyone for watching this video and I hope to see you all in the next one.